Over the last two or three years or so, since I switched to using tiling window managers, I've tried pretty much all of them. I started out on i3, I moved to BSPWM, I switched to Qtile, I've used Awesome, I've used Herbst Luft for a little while, I've used Xmonad extensively, actually. As much as I hate Xmonad, I've used it a lot. I've tried out things like IceWM and JWM and CWM. Uh, I've tried a lot of window managers, that's the point. But I keep repeatedly coming back to DWM. DWM is my favorite tiling window manager. And I just can't seem to escape it. And I don't really want to. So today what I thought I would do is talk about five reasons why I really, really like DWM. And I like a few of the other Suckless software tools as well. I'm not a big fan of all of them. I'll explain that a little bit later. But for the most part, some of the Suckless philosophy really does seem to be my kind of thing. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the first reason why I really like DWM is that it's minimal by design, but it's still mostly functional. Now, I say mostly functional because I do believe that there are many patches that you need to install in order for DWM to be fantastic. But if you didn't want to install those things, you could use DWM out of the box and it would be fine. So those are people who argue that DWM is worthless because it has certain functions that aren't built in. I wouldn't agree with those people because you can use it. Now, I think in order for it to be really good, you do have to add a few patches, like being able to move windows up in the stack. So by default, if I wanted to move this window up in the stack, I couldn't do that by default. There's no way to do that. You have to have a patch in order to do it. So there are a few function pieces of functionality that you do have to add by patches in, in order to make DWM good. But I like that it's minimal. I like that I can add in the features that I need. And I'll talk more about this when I talk about patching. Instead of having to go through and actually have those functions forced on me. Now, a few of those I wouldn't mind if they were built in. But other things like gaps, I don't need those things built in. I want to be able to put them in if I want them to be put in. Uh, or I like being able to choose what kind of gaps that I can put in. Because if you have i3 gaps, you have whatever control the developer gives you. Whereas you can, if you put patches, and like I said, I'll talk about patches later, you can go through and use several different patches for gaps. You can choose one. Number two on the list is that it's not updated very often. DWM hasn't been updated since 2019, and that's going on three years. Now, a lot of people are thinking, well, wow, is this thing abandoned? And no, it's not abandoned. DWM is meant to be very, very stable. And if you use other window managers, you'll know that that's not always the case. So if you use something like Qtile, Qtile breaks a lot. And that's because they're always updating Qtile and coming up with new widgets and stuff for their bar, and that tends to break things. So I like that DWM just happens to not update very often because I know that my build of DWM is going to stay as stable as possible. If something goes wrong, chances are it's the distro that has gone wrong and not something that's gone wrong with the window manager. The third thing that I really like about DWM is that you can patch it. Now... The patching system for DWM is highly controversial. Some people love it, some people hate it. And I've vacillated between these two points of views a few times, and because the patching system for DWM is not perfect. Like, if you patch your DWM install too much, things are going to break. A lot of patches conflict with each other, and things will just eventually bog down to the point where DWM won't build. It happens. I've been successful between 7 and 10 patches. I've never made it beyond 10 patches. Right now, I think I'm at 8, and I would highly doubt if I tried to patch this again, I would actually be successful. It would really depend on what patch I was trying to add, but uh, I don't think I'd be successful. So the patching system is flawed in that it's not extensible indefinitely. But I do enjoy the fact that I can go through and add in the features that I want without having to have them forced on me. Now, it's not a big deal. You know, like, i3 comes with all the features it's ever going to have. It just does. 
and you can I mean you can build scripts on top of it, but all the features that i3 has, it's already has them. You're not going to add anything on top of them. And that's a fine way of doing things. I like i3 plenty. Uh, it's the same thing with BSPWM. Uh, Xmonad is kind of the same way. You download all of H Haskell and then you can call libraries and stuff like that. So technically you can add features to Xmonad, but uh, you've already downloaded all those things. It's just a matter of including the libraries or whatever they're called in the configuration file. So I, I don't mind that way of doing things, uh, um, but I also enjoy the peace of mind of knowing exactly what's in my window manager. So I know that everything, most of the features that are in my build of DWM, I put there. I built this thing from the ground up and I know exactly what's there. And that peace of mind also allows me to know the exact functionality of my window manager. Every key binding that is in DWM, I put there. Every way of maneuvering the windows is something that I set to that specific way of doing things. Every layout that I have is there by design because I put it there. And that's just a great feeling. It's it's kind of like I built this window manager and that's just a feeling that you really can't get anywhere else. The fourth one is kind of wishy-washy, but I, I put it out there. I like that DWM doesn't have any unnecessary layouts. By default, it comes with three. Tiling, monocle, and floating. That's literally it. Those are the only ones. And if... You know, for me, that's perfectly fine. Those are really the only three that I'm ever going to use. But there are other layouts that you can install but via patches if you want to. But unlike other window managers, like Awesome, I don't have to deal with 12 different layouts and figuring out how to set one by default or disabling whatever layouts I don't want. I can just use the ones that are there and I'm, I'll be happy. I don't have to deal with any of that cruft. And a lot of window managers are like that. So Qtile has a ton of window man a ton of layouts by default. I don't think that they're all enabled, but Awesome, for example, has all of their window man win window manager layouts uh, enabled by default, and their default one is floating. And I don't want floating. And I mean, it's easy enough to change. I understand that, but. I don't have to change it in DWM, it's just there out of the box. And I don't have to deal with going through and changing any of that other stuff in order to get it the way I want it. The final point on the list is that DWM is a fantastic window manager for if you have multiple monitors. It handles them very, very well. Now, there is a patch that you have to use in order to get bars on both monitors or on all your monitors, but outside of that, DWM handles multi-monitors probably the best of any window manager, or at least any dynamic window manager that I've ever used. Uh, it, I could see the argument that says something like i3 does a really good job as well, and I agree that it does. If you are interested in having uh, just a ton of workspaces, like 20 or 30 workspaces, i3 is going to be the best window manager you could use because you can go through and dictate what when workspaces on which monitor and you know it's just amazing that way with dwm i like it because every works every monitor you have you have nine workspaces it's just the way it is now it's not as flexible with as i3 in terms of like key bindings it's really hard to set key bindings for specific monitors and specific workspaces on specific monitors you can do it there's a patch to do it but i've never been able to get it to actually install but that is something you can do with i3 but i do like the fact that you just have a set number of workspaces on each monitor you don't have to deal with this whole thing where you have nine workspaces and you have to share them across all your monitors something like xmonad or qtile and while you can add workspaces to those you still share them across all your monitors and that's a workflow that i've never really gotten used to where sometimes you switch to a certain workspace and you expect that workspace to be on a certain monitor but you have another monitor focused it'll actually switch to that workspace on the monitor that is focused and it's just like i said it's not a workflow that i've ever particularly gotten a hang of. Now, I've used it in the past, and it's fine, but it's not for me. I like 
to have my workspaces, whether they're numbered or with icons or whatever, in places where I know that they're always going to be. They're not moving around willy-nilly. And that's just for me. Now, I know other people prefer the whole sharing of workspaces across monitors. That's fine. Uh, that's their workflow. For me, like I said, I like to have the workspaces on the monitors that they're, you know, supposed to just, that they're just going to stay there. There are a few things with DWM that I don't like. So I thought I would go through and cover a few things that are, you know, not all that great as well. Um, I talked a little bit about the patches, how the patching system is flawed. If you patch it too often, it's going to you know, bork on you. It's just going to go away. It's not going to be do. It's not going to build or something, and it's not great. So that's a, that's a, a situation that's just never going to be fixed because that's the nature of the way patches work. Another thing is is that the support from the suckless community is god awful. It's so bad they don't want to support you at all. Uh, if you have a stupid noob question, don't even bother asking the suckless people. They're going to make fun of you and tell you to go away. Because that's their philosophy. They don't want you to go through and ask questions if you're a noob. They don't want noobs using their software. It says so right on their website. So that's why I've tried to make several tutorials on my channel. Uh, how to install and how to use DWM and Suckless software. Because I feel that that support is really needed. And the developers aren't ever going to offer that. So if, uh, if you're looking for a window manager and you're a noob... Stay away from DWM unless you're highly ab able to support yourself. The last thing that I don't like about Suckless software in general is that the other pieces of software, Suckless software, they're not great. The only other truly spectacular piece of Suckless software outside of DWM that exists really is DMenu. Now, Tab isn't horrible. I just don't use it, so I really can't speak about how good it is. Uh, but I use DMenu. DMenu is great. ST, I've used ST as my main terminal emulator before. It's okay. It's not the greatest thing out there. If you've used things like Alacrity before, if you've used Termite back when it was here, RIP Termite, those are way better than ST ever will be. Even if you go through and patch the hell out of ST, it's never going to be up to the standards of things like Alacrity or Kitty or something like that that are that have a lot of really good, uh, really neat features. Um, and I don't even really want to get started on Surf. Surf just shouldn't exist. I mean, it really shouldn't. It's a horrible browser. It's slow. It's not as good as Cute Browser. Not even close. You know. So I mean, it's just it's not a good browser. So it should they shouldn't waste their time on. It. I understand doing a browser in a suckless fashion just isn't possible because the modern day internet requires a lot of stuff in your browser in order to navigate around it, in order to make it actually, you know, good. So, and Suckless, just, you, you can't do it. And it shows it's just slow. So, uh, that's probably my other complaint, is that I would really like to have a whole suite of Suckless software that I can go through and patch to my heart's content and make my own. But most of the suite is just meh at best, or really bad in the case of Surf. So, uh, yeah, those are my arguments against Suckless Software. But DWM still remains my favorite tiling window manager. I've used all the most of all of the others, uh, and most of them for significant amounts of time. I've spent a lot of time in i3. I've spent a lot of time in BSPWM. I've spent quite a bit of time lately in Awesome Window Manager. I don't care for Awesome Window Manager as much as a lot of other people do. Uh, Lua is just not my thing. I understand Lua a hell of a lot more than I understand Haskell, but it's not a programming language that I particularly enjoy. Uh, C++ is my language that I understand more than all the others. Now, Python comes close because I'm actually learning Python. So I like Qtile, but Qtile has that whole pesky thing where they update it a lot and things break and it bothers me a lot. Uh, so I can't use Qtile as much as I'd really like to because it actually is a really good tiling window manager, but that update thing is just pesky. So, um, yeah, DWM is just, it's, it's my tiling window manager. I've tried all of them and I keep coming back. So in the comments below, I'd really like to know what your tiling window manager of choice is. If you use a tiling window manager or if you've tried DWM and you like it just as much as I do, come be a fanboy with me in the comments. So 
You can also follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Patrick L., Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Knifeman Tool, Steve A., Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, and the BSDs Rock. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.